gladiation across the nation. I'm ready to rumble. Today on American Gladiators, first round action continues. Elise Johnson, she's one of the few in the crowd. She knows what it's like to give her own blood, sweat, and tears for a noble cause. I didn't spend four years in the Marine Corps to get this far to lay down. But her hands will be full with a 25-year-old private eye from Minnesota named Erica Alstead. She's primed and ready. This is Lazen's motto, and don't ever forget it. Never surrender. Whoa. On the men's side, South Florida's Alex Engman. He's the fastest of all contenders with a 4.54 40-yard dash. But he'll need more than speed to deal with the street smarts and drive of James Long from Queens. I'm ready to rock and roll on the American Gladiators. This New York City boy's been waiting a long time for this. But beware, contenders. Our Gladiators version of rock and roll will really make you twist and shout. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, from Gladiator Arena in Los Angeles, California, here are your American Gladiators. Blade, Turbo, Ice, Gemini, Blaze, Thunder, Zap, Laser, Gold, and Nitro. Samuel Goldman Company presents the American Gladiator. Let the games begin. <laughs> Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with Hall of Fame fullback Larry Zonka. Glad you could join us for another season of the American Gladiator. The men are up first in this preliminary round. It'll be uh, James Long versus Alex Engman. What's the scouting report on those two men? Well, Alex is the one I've looked at probably the most. He's the guy with the tremendous speed. He's got some 4.5 speed in the 40. He's going to need every bit of that to elude the likes of Thunder and Gemini and some of those people. James, on the other hand, not quite so fast, strong, tough kid from New York, kind of quiet, a little soap opera experience. Uh, maybe he'll get a movie part out of this, but I don't know how he's going to do. We'll have to check him out when he goes up against the likes of Thunder. Well, James Long and Alex Engman about to begin a long ordeal, seven events, and it all begins with Atlasphere. Thunder, just one of the gladiators the contenders will be banging up against. Once again, they have 60 seconds to roll their spheres into one of four numbered scoring pods. Each goal worth two points, and believe me, it's quite a workout. James Long getting a little help, getting buckled up. James comes to us from Queens, New York, 24 years old, 170 pounds, and is an industrial designer. Alex Engman buckling up his helmet. He's an exercise physiologist. He comes to us from Coconut Grove, Florida, 24 years old and 180 pounds. And our contender's about to find out how explosive TNT really is as they go against Thunder and Turbo. Atlasphere is brought to you by M&M Chocolate Candies. Have a handful of smiles. Our referee, Larry Thompson, about to start the match. The momentum of Thunder, Thunder and Turbo <laughs> coming right out of the chutes. Alex Engman rolls right by Thunder and scores first. Working his way towards scoring pot number three, but Thunder bangs him there. And now James Long has a breakaway towards scoring pot number one. He activates the sensor and gets the score there. So we're tied in this particular match. Thunder doing a real number on Alex Engman. He's upside down every which way inside the red cage. Time running out. James Long activated that scoring pod number one, but time had expired before he did so. So James Long wins it 4-2, and it appears, Larry, that Alex may have sustained some kind of leg injury. We'll try to get a report for you. Here's he had something go wrong in his lower left calf. And one of the assistant trainers there, our head trainer, Tony Spino, will take a look at that, and we'll get a report. Meanwhile, our women head out from the locker room. Elise Johnson and Erica right, Alstead. We're going to get them. Show them who's boss. 
our former Marine MP versus the private eye. And a look at Lace getting inside of her sphere. I'm sure she has other ideas for our contenders. She'll be joined by the always formidable Ice. Elise Johnson, a freelance photographer, and as Mike alluded to, a member of the Marine Corps. She comes to us from Long Beach, California, 28 years old, 140 pounds. She looks like she's ready. Her competition will be Erica Allstead. She's 25 years old, 145 pounds, comes to us from Duluth, Minnesota. And she's a private eye. She's gonna need some tricks of the trade to score some points here. Again, the contenders have 60 seconds to score as many times as they can in Tenders, Atlasphere. Ready. The scoring ready, pods are ready. numbered one, two, three, and four for easier identification. Each goal worth two points. Boy, Ice meets uh, <laughs> Erica. Erica head on. Lace trying to keep Elise Johnson out of that scoring pod number two. Both gladiators successful, I might add. Elise almost. Had it in scoring pod number three, but Erica nothing doing. Away. They are sensors in the middle of those scoring pods, and Erica and Elise both have just missed scoring several times. Elise has got one there. Erica going for pod number two. Can she make it settle? Yes, she gets a hit. Picks up the score. Ten seconds remaining, Elise trying to settle in scoring pod number three and does so despite the best efforts of Lace, who is topsy-turvy inside of her cage. Now Elise again is scoring pod number two. So, and look at Ice, Larry, inside of her cage. She is exhausted. She was up and down the track several times. Okay. What can I say about that aerobic workout? And Elise, with three goals, scores six points. Erica Alstead scored once worth two points, so 6-2 the unofficial result. Now in the men's competition, some bad news for Alex Engman. Our trainers have determined that his leg injury is severe enough to warrant dropping out of the competition. We'll find out who his replacement is as American Gladiators continues after this. Up next, it's Assault. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California, where Nitro is the man with the plan, as we are set now for Assault, where a contender can earn one point for every weapon he or she successfully fires, or 10 points for hitting the target located above the Gladiator. And joining us as Alex Ingman's replacement is Johnny Vineyard. He comes to us from Tustin, California, 24 years old, 170 pounds. He's a construction worker. And Mike, it's going to be tough on Johnny stepping in cold into the heat of the competition. Ready? Again, the contenders have 60 seconds to get the job done. Larry, we talked about the speed of Alex Engman. Johnny Vineyard, no slouch either. No, but in this event, Mike, that's only half the battle. The hand-eye coordination, well, Assault will really test that. Johnny's got some nice moves. Nitro, an old veteran at this, he knows when that contender is going to be the most exposed and tries to time his shots accordingly. Nitro only has a complement of 20 tennis balls in that cannon, and <laughs> did Johnny Vineyard hit him? <laughs> Nitro almost had his hair parted. No ruling yet. Johnny continues on. Let's see what happens. Oh! Nitro says, you're going to mess my hair up, huh? <laughs> Johnny trying to scramble for the finish line. If he can get across, he does not as Nitro picks him off. But again, there's some question as to whether or not Johnny hit the target. Let's see. It comes down to a decision from Larry Thompson here. You can see the rocket. It first hits <laughs> the outer perimeter of the target, it appears, and then bounces off Nitro's head. Nitro's a little concerned about it. Don't be messing with my hair now. After looking at the tape, I made the decision that the rocket actually struck the target first and the rim second. Therefore, Johnny Vineyard will be awarded full 10 points for his efforts. Another look at the accurate shot and the discerning eye of our referee, Larry Thompson. So as a result, Johnny Vineyard picks up 10 points and leads 12-4. But now it's James Long's turn. James has got to get in the heat of this thing, pick up some points. He finds himself way behind. 
I don't think Nitro shares his enthusiasm. He says number two is up, and so is your number, James. James looks like a Norman Rockwell painting the paper boy next door, but he's plenty tough and plenty determined. Nitro bearing down on board James. I think Nitro had his hair mussed up. He didn't care for that. He's going to take it out on James. Larry, maybe that's the secret for the contenders. Go for Nitro's quaff. <laughs> And James picking up points along the way for every weapon he fires. And Nitro has him doing the Fandango every time he comes out of one of those safe zones. He unloads on him. Fifteen seconds left. Whoa. Oh, he's right under the gun here. Trying to scramble across the finish line for an extra point. Nitro has run out of ammunition. And James has done it with four ticks left on the clock. He picks up six points in this event. Nicely done. And he stays close to Johnny Vineyard in his preliminary matchup. No mistakes allowed. And now finds himself back in the thick of the race. A look now at 28-year-old Elise Johnson, who's brought a 6-2 lead into this game of assault over Erica Alstead. She'll be going against and drawing fire from Gold, who's batting 625 in this event with 10 hits in 16 games. Ready! Gold and one also very accurate. At least backing up and taking aim. Oh boy, mighty close. A little cat and mouse, a little hide and seek as Gold lays out a barrage. Tell you one thing, Larry, our contenders have done, the, done their homework. They know how to move across the arena floor. Ah. <laughs> Boy, that was a kiss of death, wasn't it? <laughs> it's like a dying bird in mid-flight. <laughs> so chalk up another one for the golden one. At least Johnson does earn one point for a successful, or two points, rather, for successfully engaging two weapons. Up next, the woman who calls herself the Blonde Bomber, 28 years old or 25-year-old Erica Alstead from Duluth, Minnesota. She trails Elise 8-2. She has a chance to narrow the gap, and Gold once again manning the gun. Again, the contenders have 60 seconds to hit that target. Whoa, way high. Erica, private eye, be pretty used to this game. Now on her way to the, at the third safe zone. Oh, another near miss there. for one of our contenders. Yes! Yes! Got it. yes! No doubt about that one. Erica Alstead picks up the 10 points. Right on the money, Gold a little disappointed with herself. Erica used to handling that pistol a little bit as a private eye. Good target shooter and proved it to us right here. Laid it right into the bull's eye and picks up big 10 points. And for her work against Gold, Erica will take a 12-8 lead into the locker room. And that just happens to be the place where Zap is working out for the next event. Stay with us, it's Hang Tough. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, where Johnny Vineyard has a 12-10 lead over James Long after two events. And now they're set for Hang Tough. Mike James had butterflies a little earlier on as we see Nitro preparing for his part in Hang Tough, but I believe he's over them now. And Larry, there's a lot more to James than meets the eye. He's quite a unique individual. He's an industrial designer, a graduate of the renowned Pratt Institute. And he's a man who plays as hard as he works. You no, know, I'm not one of these L.A. hot dogs I'm from New York. It's straightforward with me. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to BS you in any way. It's just, this is what I am, and that's it. As always, his family is behind him, as well as his best buddy, his little nephew, Sam. Nobody has this. This is my uh, good luck Grover, which my nephew gave me. And uh, I'm sure nobody has this, and with this, no one can beat me. 
Well, James may need more than this Sesame Street character to help him get by and hang tough. The event where a contender can earn 10 points for making it all the way across the grid of rings to the Gladiators platform, or five points by lasting 60 seconds Ready? for a draw. But he'll have to hang tough against Nitro, who's got a great record in this event. James Long is on his way. We talked about James's strength at the top of the show. I'm going to demonstrate that upper body strength right here. He seems pretty relaxed on the rings. Nice and smooth. Got a little bit of an opening. Got an alley down that outside if he can make this next connection. Now he's got to go for it. Nitro swinging back to try to get Big James. Big swing here. You got to get it here, James. You got to make your moves, huh? Now. You got to jump, baby. Jump. Oh. Jump. Jump. Hang on. Hey, jump. Jump. He did it. And just in time, Nitro hot on his case, one foot on, one foot off. I but James comes away. Seen, I don't think we've ever seen a closer match, Larry. James coming away with 10 points. And a look at the balance here. Maybe it was Grover that helped out after all. James now leads it 2012. As Johnny Vineyard ascends the platform for his turn. If you've just joined us, Johnny came on as an alternate for the injured Alex Engman. Came Ready? out strong right off the bat. Well, Mike, that's exactly right. He picked up 10 points in assault. He's got himself on a roll. Now he has to maintain it. Johnny keeping one eye on the rings and one eye on Nitro, and look out. Oh! Nitro inadvertently hit Johnny in the face with one of his legs trying to grab on. Johnny's in big trouble now. I don't think he can hang on at all unless he's got superior strength. 30 seconds, Nitro. As strong as Johnny Vineyard is with two arms, he's not that strong with one arm. Nitro, just too much body weight. Johnny couldn't hang on, and so Nitro does get the win here and hangs up. And Nitro being applauded by his biggest fan club, the other Gladiators. Great deal of chemistry between our Gladiators, and up next for them is Zap, because the women are about to ascend the platform. This is Erica Alstead. She'll hang tough first, and she leads Elise Johnson 12 to 8. Erica with that long reach. Should come in handy in this uh, event of hang tough. She's got good upper body strength too, Mike. Same can be said for Zap. That's the name of her game, strength, upper body strength. Ready? <laughs> Erica, a little bit of a predetermined plan, but she's gonna have to change it. She's in trouble already because Zap had her red. <laughs> She's right down. Oh. Oh. She's move. Erica had Zap going in the wrong direction. Now she's desperately looking for a ring to hang on to, has found it, and is back in business. But her back is turned towards Erica. Erica very close to that platform. If she leaps now, she's got it. Got she does. It. Stage. Ten points for Erica Alstead. And a nice bit of sportsmanship there. Erica helping Zap to the platform. Zap is a competitor, and that defeat stings. You can see by the look on her face. And now it's time for our former Marine MP, now freelance photographer, to try her hand at Hank Tough, Elise Johnson, 28 years old from Long Beach, California. She'll be going against Zap. <laughs> Zap has that learning experience under her belt now. I think she's ready for some contender here. Elise smiling, <laughs> Zap smiling back. I don't know. <laughs> They've exchanged some kind of uh, pleasantries. I got a feeling it's not going to be too pleasant Ready? once the bell rings here, the whistle sounds. Contenders again have 60 seconds to try to make it to that Gladiators platform. Elise, Elise could use the 10 points. She trails 22-8. Elise going backwards now, and now in trouble. She's trying to find a ring to hang on to. She has to try to make an effort to advance and get a ring. I know she's trying. 
Now both women in trouble. 30 seconds left. Zap slipped off her ring. Oh, was getting plotting her move and then slipped off the ring. Now she's just more or less neutralized there. Elise on the breakaway. Long swings, few seconds left. She can do it if she's efficient. 14, 13, 12. Two more. Elise Johnson, after early problems, looked like she was in trouble. Gets across to the platform, picks up the 10 points, and look at that emotion. And that allows our former Marine to stay close to Erica Alstead after three events. But for Zap, well, it's back to the drawing board because Powerball is next. Elise Johnson's gritty performance in Hang Tough, Larry, indicative of how all the contenders have done in this preliminary round. Both competitions between the men and the women extremely close. And it's something of a surprise to us because we watched these contenders work their way through <laughs> practice sessions. They were a little bit intimidated, to be quite frank. When they first showed up here for their practice rounds, they were awed by both the gladiators and the events themselves. They were a little, frankly, afraid of them. But today, uh, you know, competition brings out the best, and they're in the thick of the hunt. They've all represented themselves very well, particularly Johnny coming in, pinch hitting, jumping in all of a sudden in the, in the thick of it, and he's done very well. But that's three events down and four very difficult <laughs> events to come, including the Eliminator. But the name of the game right now, Powerball, Laser, Thunder, and Turbo take to the arena floor to do battle with James Long and Johnny Vineyard, Larry. Well, Mike, we've seen some finesse events, and they've gone down pretty well. Johnny stepping in cold, getting into the heat of the battle. But now the name of the game is Contact. Maybe we'll get a chance to see what James is made of right here. The contenders have 45 seconds to score, and the outer cylinders were two points, and the center cylinder were three. And Powerball is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Now you're playing with power, super power. Ready? Turbo. Gets body slammed immediately, and that'll shake you up. James no trying score, to spin no past score. Turbo. As he throws James out of bounds. He's a little banged up. John a little upset. He's uh, trying to score. I tell you what, Turbo has terminated both uh, Johnny and James every time the contenders have come his way. Like a uh, little strategy by the Gladiators is working very well. Thunder sort of rotating in for in. He's playing zone defense and giving help to whichever gladiator needs it. Johnny came mighty close to scoring. Turbo perhaps a little high around Johnny's head. Also came close to losing his head at the hands of Turbo. Turbo a little well, over 45 seconds is over. And the gladiators have themselves a shutout. And Turbo takes a leap up on the divider, celebrating his victory, the big bully. Is right here. He takes Johnny to the mat. No uncertain terms. Hello, AstroTurf. Comes around, grabs him again. Johnny pays the price twice in a row. Meanwhile, down at the other end, James says, hey, these guys are ganging up on me. How about over here? No, over here. Wait a minute. I'll just try up the middle. Big mistake, James. Boy, I'll say, Larry, the Gladiators pitched the shutout, and the score between James and Johnny remains the same after four events. Working out is a full-time job for our gladiators, and that's the subject of one of our new features this season, where viewers can write in to their favorite gladiator and ask them a question. Greg Long from Knoxville, Tennessee asks Lace, what is your athletic background and what do you do to stay in such good shape? <laughs> wow, Greg, thanks for writing in and thanks for letting me know I'm in great shape. Hmm. Uh, I worked pretty hard to get into this kind of shape for the season. Uh, I put on 20 pounds, uh, ate a lot, I was in the gym once, sometimes twice a day, lifting weights and running on the beach afterwards. I like to play volleyball on the weekends on the beach, uh, swim when it's warm enough in the water. Uh, I kickbox, UKDCon style, and uh, chase boys. <laughs> well, in Powerball, however, she'll be chasing contenders along with Blaze and Ice. If you'd like to ask our Gladiator a question, write to 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 967. You know, as we look at our score, 22 to 18, Elise and Erica have to have some second thoughts about Powerball after witnessing what happened to the men. Ready? Again, 45 seconds of nonstop action. 
And Erica quickly scores as she puts a nice move on Blaze. Stay down. Go score. Go score. And Lace a little bigger this year, Larry. She's put on some bulk. Not just bulk, she's put on some real muscle and she's using it on some of these contenders. You know, Mike, these contenders, after witnessing the men, they're using a little more stop and go Let technique go. instead of trying go to bulldoze. Go Can you blame them? Not at all. This is a rough game, and they're getting a good taste of it. Watch the time. 10 seconds remaining. Blaze throws Erica down. Go our female gladiators almost as formidable as our men. Only one score that time. That by Erica Alstead. And Mike, here's the replay on that. You'll see Erica take a shot up high, but she gets the ball in. And as you might expect, the uh, gladiator's feeling a little chippy. <laughs> Stay with us, the joust is next. Get in on the action and join the American Gladiators Fan Club. Send $3 check or money order to American Gladiators, Van Nuys, California, 91463-0001. Or pick up a fan club application from your local General Nutrition Center. We are back, Gladiator Arena, where Erica Alsted has a six-point lead over our former Marine Elise Johnson after four events. They are set now for the Jows. Elise is up first. She draws gold. She'll get 10 points if she can knock the Gladiator off the platform. Five points if she can last the entire 30 seconds for the draw. And will Erica and Elise be able to keep their heads during this event? with the undercut, strikes gold first. Gold now battling back. Gold landing a couple of heavy crossovers on Elise's chin, but Elise just sort of shrugged him off and said, come on. No real heavy blows being landed. We're just playing kissy face right now. Gold going for the head in an attempt to knock EJ off the platform. The time has expired, so Elise will earn five points for the draw. Elise, obviously no stranger to this kind of combat, takes a few licks to the head, but does a great job of maintaining her balance. And balance is uppermost in Erica Alstead's mind as she draws gold this time. Erica with a one-point lead can obviously add to that with a victory or a draw here. Erica's got to be feeling lonely up there and wondering whether she can absorb some of those shots that Gold's going to deliver. Gold wastes no time delivering some of those blows and beats her to the ground. Erica on the ground and the contender must make an attempt to get up. Erica does get up. And Erica on the verge of defeat uses that thrust and knocks Gold off. I can't believe it. <laughs> Beat down on one knee and comes back strong and bludgeons cold off. Erica, you were on one knee. Gold had you on the verge of going off that platform. You survived. What happened? Hard head, I guess. She's tough. <laughs> Great display of toughness. Congratulations. You earned 10 points. Thanks. And that 10 points pumps Erica's lead back up to 34-23, 11 points, and she gets a well-deserved hug from Gold. The men are up next. Nitro is sending the platform in time now for another Gladiator moment. A moment I'll probably never forget in American Gladiators when I was jousting Lucian Anderson and I lost my stick and he continued to beat on me. Well, as you know, intensity is even the game for me because I'm not a bigger guy. And I just took Lucian by the face after he hit me. I just kind of shoved him into the ground. And when I got done, I said, God, what did I do that for? And I see it now on tape. But at the time, it was very memorable. I think it kind of showed everybody I was here and always am here to play, and I mean business. I think that was a pretty memorable moment for Lucian Anderson also. What do you think, Mike? I agree with you, Larry. And I think Johnny Vineyard, who trails James Long by eight, is looking for his own memorable moment here. He'd like to defeat Nitro if possible. Yeah, but Nitro looks forward to the joust. On guard! Nitro wastes no time getting after him. Johnny ducking down and going low. 
<laughs> Dummy's trying to hide, <laughs> and then come out of hiding and deliver as Nitro is just about beating him senseless with the end of the pugil stick. Dummy steps across, and that's an immediate disqualification. So he still trails James Long by 8, 20 to 12, and really kind of a tough break for Johnny because he did do some yeoman work up there, Larry. Well, he had to absorb some blows, you see right here. Nitro just teeing off. Looks like he's batting 300 in the majors right there. Johnny, a great job of keeping his balance. He knocked, knocked off, but then he commits the big air and steps across. This is James Long in the joust. He'll be doing battle against Nitro. Just a quiet old down home boy. Strong and tough. You know, we have a picture here, Larry, of James <laughs> when he was a childhood star on a soap opera called The Guiding Light. Who would have ever thought that this young man, little boy, would grow up to be a contender on the American Gladiators fighting a man named Nitro? <laughs> <laughs> Looks a little like Opie right there, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, he knocked uh, Nitro's helmet loose. Nitro's a little blinded for a second. Oh! Nice comeback. James almost off the platform backward. Nitro getting a little over aggressive, crosses over to James's platform. Automatic disqualification for James Long. Ten more points. Well, Nitro complaining about not being able to see, but the reason that Nitro can't see is because James Long delivers some ferocious blows right here, dislodging Nitro's helmet and infuriating Nitro to the point where he loses his balance on the attack and steps across to the other platform, which is an immediate disqualification and 10 points to James Long. Nitro finally said, enough is enough, throws his stick down, throws his helmet down, and said, hey, that's it. But James Long picks up the 10 points, and coming up next, swing shot. Welcome back to Los Angeles, California, Gladiator Arena, and now it's time for the women's swing shot. Erica Alstead leads Elise Johnson, 34-23. Again, the contenders have 45 seconds to pluck as many of those balls attached to that center cylinder off and then put them back in the scoring pod. For the Gladiators, it'll be lace, gold, and ice. Erica Alstead demonstrating a knack for this in the practice round. She's done very well. We'll see how she does when she matches up against the Gladiators, Mike. Contenders ready! Gladiators Timing is everything ready. in this event. And they're on their way. Erica picks one of the yellow balls off. Can she get it back in the uh, scoring pod? Swing, she does. Swing. Gladiators going in rotation, trying to block. Elise Johnson's got one, Larry. Elise has got one. Can she get it back in? She uses her <laughs> teeth to hang on to it. I like that Joe. technique. <laughs> Don't knock them off. Don't knock them Contenders off. have to Joe. keep rolling. They can't hesitate. Well, the Gladiators can, can wait and take their shot. Nice defensive move by Ice there on Erica. Erica Joe. surely would have had a score had not ice gotten Here. in the way. Here comes, Here comes gold, gold against Erica. Don't take him off. That's the time. And that's the end of the 45 seconds. After six events, Erica retains her 11 point lead. Now coming up in three weeks on the American Gladiators, another one of our new events. We call it the maze and it is the mother of all puzzlers. Don't miss it. Time now for men's swing shot. James Long, he'll be in the blue versus Johnny Vineyard in the gray. And Johnny needs to pick up points here if he's gonna put himself in good stead for the final event. That, of course, the Eliminator. Laser, Turbo, and Gemini will be doing the honors for the Gladiators. And Mike, Johnny's gonna have to make a move here. He hasn't scored a point since way back in the assault. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! And there they go. Bingo! Turbo knocking that pendulum with his shoulder. <laughs> I tell you, what's happened here is uh, both 
<laughs> There's a first. James isn't giving up his ball. He doesn't care what he's hung up on. Well, like I said, this is a one of the new contests here on American Gladiators. Johnny though recovers and gets a blue. Now he, big thing is he's got to get back up to the top of his platform and put it in the scoring pod. Easier said than done. James Long went clear up oh, and put the ball right it, in yeah. the basket without even hooking himself on the pipe. He just went up and dropped it in. Great job by James Long. Okay, James Long with the victory in swing shot, three to two, and he takes a commanding lead into the final event, the Eliminator. And here's how the man from New York does it. He swings through the trees with the greatest of ease, but now it's time for the Eliminator. He's with Mike. <laughs> Let's talk about the final event, the Eliminator. You're going to have quite a substantial lead uh, going in. You get a nine and a half second head start. That's good. I feel I feel good about that. I mean, every second counts in this game. It's a game of time. And the one-time soap opera star on uh, the Guiding Light way back when as a child, he'll be going in it and going on, trying to go on to the quarterfinals after the Eliminator. We'll have that next. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena as we prepare for our final event. The Eliminator. And right now, Eric Allstead is enjoying an 11 point lead over Elise Johnson. And under our new Eliminator scoring system, each contender gets a one half second head start for every point they're in the lead. So this means that Erica gets a sizable head start with Elise having her work cut out for her. Mike? In last week's women's preliminary round, a five and a half second head start didn't mean much in the Eliminator. Will history repeat itself? Well, Erica Alsted has an 11 point lead over Elise Johnson, which means she has a five and a half second head start. Can Elise make up the difference? Well, we'll try to get some answers. Larry Zonka's with her at the start line. Larry? EJ, you've slugged it out, shot it out, pounded it out. You're right in the thick of the hunt. It's gonna be a long five seconds or so. But once you start, what's your strategy? Um, I can't rely on her making any mistakes, so I have to just dig down deep and, and take charge. You're gonna hang it out and go for it. I'm going for it. Go for it. We're going to be watching. Thank you. And a couple of new wrinkles in this year's Eliminator course. If a contender falls from the hand bike, they will be detained for 10 seconds by two gladiators, in this case, Gemini and Laser. Gladiators will also factor into the outcome. In the gauntlet, you can see Zap and Blaze there. And on the tower, there's Ice and Gold. Erica Alstead, the private investigator from Duluth, Minnesota, 25 years old. She'll get that five and a half second head start. Referee Larry Thompson gets Erica on her way, struggling a little bit against the treadmill, but she makes it to the top. Here comes EJ, Elise Johnson, the former Marine MP. Erica very strong, working her way across on the hand bike, and Elise just making it to the top of the treadmill. Now she goes across. The oh, hand Erica bike. takes a spell. She's going to have to crawl up that ladder. It's going to cost her valuable time. That led to Larry not very sturdy, and it does cost a contender time, but up Erica goes, and she has made it. EJ, meanwhile, struggling on that hand bike, but she should make it too. Erica scored 10 points in assault, 10 points in hang tough, 10 in the joust, as EJ oh. goes down on the spinning logs. Erica getting a breath on top of that platform, setting herself for the fun part of this event, if there is such a thing, the zip line. Here she comes. Nice and easy. Nice one-point landing on her derriere. And now the gauntlet after she goes over the wall. Zap and Blaze waiting for her, trying to impede her progress. <laughs> One last giant medicine ball to overcome. Over the wall she goes, and Erica Alstead has done it. She will advance to the second round. <laughs> Meanwhile, Blaze bouncing those inflated medicine balls, which weigh about 30 pounds in EJ's direction. She, too, an outstanding effort as she goes down the final corridor over the wall, and finally across the finish line. A nice effort by both women. 
Here's Larry with Erica. Larry? Erica, you're one happy gal. I'll tell you what, what a great comeback, being beat down in the joust and all of a sudden standing up like Rocky, swinging your hands and coming from behind. I know you're kind of emotional about this thing, but you gotta, gotta tell us just how it feels. Um, it feels great. I did it for my daughter. I know, you've been a little homesick, been crying over her not being here, and now she's gonna join you, and she's gonna join you as a, and she's joining you as a victor. Yeah, that's great. That is great. I'm glad for you. Back to you, Mike. The men are now ready to put their best foot forward in the final event. The eliminator, James Long, has a 19-point lead over Johnny Vineyard. That translates to a nine-and-a-half-second head start for James Long. Insurmountable? Johnny Vineyard doesn't think so. He's with Larry right now at the start line. Larry? Johnny came in swinging, got 10 points in the assault, and then you went kind of lean, not many points, just a couple in, in swing shot, and now you got to let it all hang out. Oh, yeah. I got a couple bad breaks, but I'm back and I'm ready to go. All systems go. Give it your best shot. We'll be watching. Thank you. Johnny will try to stay away from falling off the hand bike. He'd have to stay down there for seven seconds. If he does, you see ice and zap there in the gauntlet. It's nitro and turbo, and atop the tower, there's thunder and Gemini. James Long from Astoria, New York in the blue. Johnny Vineyard in the gray. He from Tustin, California. James with that nine and a half second head start. Will he play it conservative? I don't think so. Not much time to think in the eliminator. Yeah, Mike, but he's got to take advantage of that nine and a half seconds. I, know, I just don't look for the big gamble behind. James struggling a bit on that treadmill. Uh-oh. There goes that nine and a half second lead. Johnny's still waiting patiently, and here he comes. Now we've got a race. They're dead even. Across the hand bike they go. Johnny Vineyard pumping, so is James Long, side by side. Now across that spinning long, Johnny Vineyard first. James Long just Ooh. makes it as well. What a comeback if he can hold it. Johnny, hand over hand, up the cargo net. He's there first. James is really struggling. We told you the Eliminator was the great equalizer. James Long just can't get off that cargo net. He is still hung up. And here comes Johnny Vineyard with a big lead. Remember, the man who crosses the finish line first is the winner. It's that simple. Turbo and Nitro try to detain Johnny a little bit. Here he goes down that final corridor. He gets banged pretty good by Thunder, who has a laugh. And Johnny Vineyard has done it. He's overcome a nine and a half second deficit to cross the finish line first. He advances to the second round. Wow. And James Long has to be mighty disappointed. He did so well in the prior six events. Johnny, what a rocky comeback. Nine and a half seconds seemed like eternity. What do you think when you saw him fall down on that, on that belt? I said, that's the ticket. It's time to go. Gave it all I got. I made it. Well, that shot of adrenaline put you across there. You're advancing. Congratulations. Call Johnny Vineyard the comeback kid and James Long. Well, he's sure to have nightmares about that treadmill. Next week, more exciting preliminary round action. Until then, for Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Adamley. Thanks for joining us here on the American Gladiators.